So have you completed this week's Excel Power Query Challenge? Pretty easy, right? Well, check out the step-by-step -step instructions from Excel MVP Alan Murray, that's Computer Gaga, on YouTube, and see how he solved the problem. Okay, let's look at how we can achieve this. The first thing we need to do is load the data from that range into Power Query. And before we do that, we should format it as a table because at the moment it is just a range. So if I select that range of cells and use the keyboard shortcut Control T to quickly create a table, I will check the range it is using and whether my table has headers or not. In this example, I'm going to say yes, let's keep those headers. That is something we can always solve in Power Query afterwards though. If we click OK, that will format the table with the default style. So I'm going to immediately come up to the Table Design tab, expand the Styles Gallery, and I like to clear those default table formats. With that done, I'm also going to remove the Filter button because that data is messy, I'm not going to be filtering that one. And then the all important job of naming the table. So instead of table one, I'm going to name it issues and press enter. Now that we have that table, I can click anywhere within that range and click on data from table slash range to load it into the Power Query editor for transforming. Now this is similar to the data that Ken took you through on the course, but there are a couple of tasks that we need to achieve that weren't covered. So this is a nice challenge to push you a little bit further. Now the first task here is to fill down column one. We have the area that the issues were received and then a lot of null values. We need those areas in the same line, the same row as the name, date, level and day information. So with the first column selected, on the transform tab, fill, fill down, will complete those rows, including the average. But we don't care about those averages, we can find those answers with formulas and pivot tables and other Excel techniques, even Power Query itself. So I'm going to remove those. Looking at the name and date column, that is a good column to use to achieve this because all we want to do is hide the null values or remove those null values. You can see that the level column would also be adequate for this task too. But if I used a filter for name and date, uncheck null and click OK, that removes all the null values and the averages were on that row, so they are also removed. This is looking great already. With that name and date column though, at the moment, as the column name implies, we have the name and the date in the same column. If we were going to do further analysis on how many issues a certain individual solved or counting issues in a date range, this would be awkward with them in the same column. So let's split them. With the column selected on the transform tab, we can click split column and a bunch of options for how to split this column are provided. For us right now, it's a delimiter. There is a space, a hyphen character, and another space separating the name from the date. And we are going to use that. So if I click delimiter, a nice window appears prompting for what delimiter to use and asking if I want a space. Now, yes, it is actually a space which separates the name and the date, but it's the second space. Now we could actually use that, and I could come and say it's the rightmost delimiter. The rightmost space would work because that second space is the last one. However, especially with spaces, you have to be careful. Very easy for people to accidentally put extra spaces in. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to change it to custom, and then type in space hyphen space 
and then where to split doesn't really matter because there's only one occurrence. But to be the ultimate professional that I am, I'm going to choose the leftmost delimiter, as it will be the first occurrence, and then click OK to perform the split. Now the name and the date are in separate columns. Now you might have noticed that in the name column, a couple of the names have had a typing error. They are the correct name, so most formulas would continue to work, but you may notice that the name Beth in row three has a lowercase b, and the name Josh in row nine has a capital O. There's a couple of mistakes. We would like to tidy that up. So with that column selected on the transform tab, format button, capitalize each word. That will sort out the case so they all start with a capital and then have lowercase letters. Now it's time to rename the columns. The first one is area, happy with that. But columns two and three don't look good. So column two, if I double click, is name and column three is date. Once we've renamed them, let's check the data types. We have text data types for the first two, which is correct. We then have a date, data type for date, a whole number data type for level. But then with days, although it looks correct, it's using a decimal data type. So if we click that, we can change its whole number. And that is a more efficient data type for it. That concludes the transformations needed. Let's now load it back to the worksheet as a table. So home tab, close and load, close and load two. A window appears. I want to leave it as table, but very useful that we can load it directly into a pivot table. Existing worksheet as well, but we could easily load this onto a different worksheet. But we're keeping it existing and everything in one place. It'll be easier to write our formulas and understand what's required from us in this challenge. If I put them in cell F1, so let me select this range for existing worksheet, F1, click OK. That table will be loaded to the worksheet. And there is our clean data. Now this table that Power Query just loaded to the worksheet needs to be named. If I click on table design at the top, it's named it issues two because the query was left as the name of issues. And there's already a table on this worksheet named issues, so it needed to quickly find a unique name. So let's come and name it something slightly better, such as issues res for resolved. If I press enter, and now let's achieve the two questions being asked of us. Starting with the average response in days in cell L5. This will be an average function, so equals average. And we now have that table. So we're going to find the average of the days column, selecting that table column for issues res days. Close bracket enter. And we have our answer, although we could probably format that a little bit better. So if I select that cell, and I'm going to use the buttons provided on the home tab to decrease a decimal until I only have one decimal place. The next question is the number of level one and level two where the responses were under five days. So we want to count how many but we have multiple conditions to reach. It has to be level one or two, and also under five days. So it's going to be a count ifs function. Multiple tests, and then to count those that meet the test. The first criteria range is prompted for, and we want to know if it was level one or level two. Now in Power Query, we checked it, and we made sure the data type was a whole number. So that is a numeric column. So the easy way to find how many ones and twos there were is to test if it's under three. The criteria range will be the level column, 
comma, the criteria, don't forget the double quotes, under three. Close double quote. And then a comma brings us on to the second criteria range, and then second criteria. This will be if it's less than five days. So if we select the days column, comma, and then a similar answer here, double quotes under five, close double quotes, close count ifs bracket, and the answer is four. Four level one or two issues resolved under five days. Now we have our answers, let's use the test data to make sure that our power query runs correctly, and then so do our formulas. So if I select the test data and drag it underneath the table, just in row 32 in this sample data, the table expands dynamically to accept the new data. We can see that with the tiny blue corner. But when we look at our Power Query table and our formulas, nothing has changed. This is because Power Query needs refreshing. So data tab, refresh all, refresh all. There's our new data that's been run through Power Query, tired and transformed, loaded to the worksheet in a table named issues res. Then our formulas run and we can now see the average response in days is 7.1 and the number of level one and two with responses under five days has increased to six. In the test data, there were two more level one and twos that had responses under five days. Remember, it must be under five days, so that issue three from the bottom does not count because it was resolved on the fifth day, not under five days. I hope you enjoyed that challenge. You are not expected to achieve it in exactly the same way as me. There are often different paths to the end result. But taking on challenges such as this one is a great way to learn and develop your Excel skills. So did you follow the same path? Share your take on the challenge in the comments below or join us for more discussion in our Slack channel, link in the description. Thanks for participating and make sure to subscribe to this channel and get an alert when the next challenge is released.